everyone has at least played one Legend of Zelda game, or at least heard of Legend of Zelda. If you haven't, then you've been living under a rock. The Master Sword Link wields is one of the most iconic swords in gaming, and as such, I've gotten requests dating all the way back to Twilight Princess's release to make this. Now, if you're new to this, I suggest you watch my in-depth tutorial first. The link is in the description. Now, if you think you can do without it, then here's a list of supplies you will need. The first thing you want to do is thank me for doing the grunt work of providing a blueprint of this sword. This took me about 8 hours to make. The download is in the description. Now, these prints are for ideal measurements, and depending on how well you make your cuts, it may deviate by a few millimeters. I recommend that you reproduce the drawings onto the template, as printing it out may cause the scale to change, so follow the numbers and not the picture. The primary material of this sword is going to be made from hardened paper. The paper I'm using is 110 pound ANSI A dimension paper, but for all you metric guys, A4 paper will also work for this. Now this is where you will need the liquid glue and some sort of glue spreader, such as a folded sheet of paper. You also want a wet cloth to clean up your mess. You want to fold and coat one side of the paper with glue, making sure there are no dry spots. This will laminate the paper once it has dried. You will want to keep these under a book to prevent them from warping while they dry for 24 hours. Make about 30 of these. You may or may not need more depending on how many mistakes are made. Now the paper is not completely dry after 24 hours. This is what we want, as we are only after it not warping as much while we are making this template, and cutting into a completely dry template is a pain. To make this, you want to stagger each layer so that it looks like the side of a brick wall. This will bridge the seams in the template and give us a solid base to make the blade. The template should be built slightly bigger than the sword. With that in mind, the dimensions for this template should be 44 inches long, at least 10 inches wide for the guard, and 5 layers thick. Once finished, put the template back under books to flatten the minor bends and leave it there for 24 hours.
Now that you have your template made and have left it to dry for 24 hours, we can begin to draw the sword onto the template. The first thing you want to do is find the center line of the template and use that as your base, as using the edges is a bad idea due to the off chance that the edges are not even. This is one of the most tedious steps, so take your time. Now that you have finished your drawing, it is time to cut out the sword. You may want to check all your measurements and make sure that they are all correct before starting, as this is the last time you can make corrections. Any mistakes past this point can cost you your entire project. You will want to get your craft knife and metal edge ruler and lightly score cuts into the template. This will create a guideline for the cutting blade. This might take two to three passes. If you can avoid free handing your cuts, then do so. Once that is done, you can start applying pressure to your cuts. Here's a tip. Find a section on the template that does not have any part of the blade on it. Try and see if you can cut through it. If it tears, let it dry for a few more hours. If it doesn't, then it's safe to proceed. Now that your blade is finally cut out, put it back into the books for 48 hours. Now this will ensure that it is dry enough to not warp when we start to add supports to it. In the meantime, get more hardened paper and make sheets that are 2 layers thick made for 110 pound sheets of paper, or 3 layers thick if made for 67 pound sheets of paper. The blueprints include a rough dimension of the wings on the guard, with each section becoming progressively smaller and creating a stair step effect when assembled. Draw these on the sheets and cut them out, again trying to avoid tearing as these will be exposed in the final product. Use scissors if need be. Once finished, they will be glued together as shown. Now that you have the wings glued in place, we can start with the supports. You will need your hot glue gun and popsicle sticks for this. Begin with the general layout as shown so you can gauge how it would look like. The support should be 4 layers high and stacked like bricks as well. You will notice that the supports do not extend to the very tip. This is to create a sharper looking tip. That section is also made from normal popsicle sticks cut in half laterally. The ends of the supports is also gradually tapered to create a smooth transition to the tip as shown. Once you have your layout, hot glue them into place. Repeat on both sides. Once you have glued on the supports, we now need to seal off the edges to prevent them from feathering and coming apart. We do this by using liquid glue and coating the edge of the blade with it. Do this to all exposed edges.
now that your edges have been sealed off, we are going to make the internal structure of the garden pommel. On the blueprint, there should be an octagon with two radius measurements. The 2.54 measurement is for the pommel, while the 3.25 measurement is for the guard. Cut those out on a template that is two layers thick and glue them on as shown. Once you've gotten the structures in place, the next step is easy to do, but hard to get to look right. We are essentially going to wrap the garden handle like if it were a mummy. Sounds easy enough, but the hard part is doing so without making it look like a complete mess. Something that can't be easily explained and must be done by feel. It is best to approach this by saying that there isn't a wrong way, just a better looking way. This is what I managed to come up with. Notice that I didn't cover the wings, as this was intentional. I recommend that you do the same. Once you have that done, we can now cover the supports of the blade. This is done by making single layer hardened sheets of paper and paneling over the blade. You will need to cut the panels to size so they fit the blade. This is where most mistakes happen. Luckily, we have extra sheets. Glue them to the sword as you go, making sure that the next panel overlaps the previous slightly so you don't see the inside of the blade. Panel both sides and reseal the edge one last time when finished. This is what it should look like when you are done paneling over the blade. Now we move on to the decorations on the blade. Included in the blueprints are dimensions for the Triforce logo, the decorations for the Picasso, and the gem on the hilt. Draw and cut these out on a template that is two layers thick. First, we are going to hot glue on the piece for the Ricasso, as shown. We will glue on the Triforce using liquid glue. This will give us time to position the pieces correctly. Start by applying the glue to only the tail portion of the Triforce frame, then position them as shown. Hold them there for a minute or two. Then using a paper clip or a thin strip of paper, apply glue to the underside of the frame. Hold it until dry. Repeat this with the triangles, then again on the other side. Get the two diamond pieces, and glue the smaller one onto the larger. Make sure to center these, then glue the whole thing to the hilt. Repeat on the other side. 